Hey, Steve here, and in this video, I'm showing you one quick high pass filter Photoshop technique that will make the clouds in your photos pop. So stay tuned to learn how to use the high pass filter to create this dramatic effect in the clouds of any photo. Now, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button to let me know so I can just keep making more videos just like this. And remember to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell notification icon so that YouTube can notify you every time I publish a new tutorial. Now, this is different to most high pass tutorials because we're not going to be using the high pass filter to sharpen the details in your photos. This is going beyond that to, uh, to open the filter up to something that you might not have seen before. So let's get started. Now, the image on the screen at the moment is a, well, it's a nice sort of daytime scene. So, you know, this effect, it works really well for daytime images, like where you've got nice fluffy white clouds in a blue sky. Uh, but it also works, I'll show you another example, um, with like a typical sunset or sunrise image with all the colorful sunrise and sunset colors in the clouds. Uh, so I'll show you the technique first on this image. And so the first step is to create a merged copied layer of your image. So if you've got multiple layers, which you usually would have by the time you get towards the end of your workflow, uh, which is when this technique is uh, really good, then you will be able to create that merged copied layer by pressing on the keyboard on a Mac, that's Command Option Shift and E, or on a PC that would be Control Alt Shift E. And what that does, it creates this new layer on top of all of your other layers. And what this layer is, it's essentially as if you've flattened all of your adjustments into the original background layer and then copied that background, but it does that without actually merging all of your layers. So you've still got that history that you can go back and uh, you know you don't lose all of your edits. So once you've got that layer, you need to go to the filter menu and go to other and then choose high pass. Now, when you're using the high pass filter to sharpen, you're probably gonna be using a radius well under 10. Um, so, you know, very much down in this left hand side of the uh, of the slider here. But for this tutorial or for this technique specifically, what we're going to be doing is pushing this way beyond that. And then we're just going to judge by eye. So we're looking for a lot of definition in the clouds here. Uh, so, you know, we want to see quite a lot of definition in the clouds, but we want to avoid those obvious like halos. So for example, here, we can see this cloud through the top right. It looks as if it's got a drop shadow effect. Uh, so, you know, that's basically not far enough. So, you know, we want to keep increasing the radius until that kind of completely disappears. And, you know, we're just starting to see the original image come through. So I think for this image around about 70 or 80 will do. So I'll click OK. And the next step is similar again to using this, uh, this technique for sharpening. We're going to change the blend mode of this layer to overlay. And we can see that looks pretty garish. That's not a good look for the entire image, but in my opinion, it actually looks pretty good in the clouds. So it is a bit strong, kind of, <laughs> you know, it's quite overcooked at the moment, but that's okay because what we can do next is add a layer mask. So I'll hold Alt or Option on the keyboard as I click the Add Layer Mask button, and that's going to create a black layer mask to hide this layer. And now with a white brush on a lowish opacity, so I'm going to use about 40% opacity, I can just brush this effect into the clouds gradually. And as I do that, the uh, you know this dramatic contrasty effect from this high pass layer is going to start coming through. Now, if I toggle this off and on, we can see this is before and this is after. So, you know, it really makes those clouds stand out and it makes them pop, uh, you know, quite significantly. And like I said, this is it's a good thing to use at the end of your workflow. And uh, yeah, that is basically the technique in a nutshell. So I'll just show you uh, another example of this. So I've got another image open over here. So here, obviously, it's a much more dramatic shot than the first. This is a sunrise image taken down at a local beach near me. 
and yeah, so I'll just give you another example. So rather than running through the step-by-step -step procedure to create that layer again, I'll just use my luminosity masking panel as a shortcut to create that whole effect. So if, uh, if you have the panel, this is a great uh, little shortcut for you. So if you open the finishes tab down here, then you'll see under the details section, we've got a button called cloud dramatizer or dramatizer. And when I hit that, that's going to essentially just run through all of the manual steps that I just showed you to create that uh, that high pass filter layer. So I'll run that and it's created that high pass layer and it's put it into a group here, which we can use, uh, which we can just kind of mask in to the image just like before. Uh, what it has done is one extra step. It's created a luminosity mask on that high pass filter layer so that we, it doesn't overexpose the highlights in the image. So I won't go into too much detail there, but essentially what it's doing is making making it so that the effect is uh, blending in a bit more naturally and it's not going to risk um, overexposing the highlights when this uh, when this layer is put into the overlay blend mode. So yeah, if you've got the panel, then that's great. You can uh, you can hit that cloud dramatizer button and it's going to do this whole thing for you. And then you can just take the white brush just like before and mask it into the sky, into the clouds. And as I do that, the effects should be revealed. And let me just do a before and after on that. And there we go. So yeah, those clouds are quite a bit more contrasty now. And just an extra tip here, if you do want to actually make this effect even stronger, just as a quick shortcut, once you've masked it into the image, you can just drag this whole group down onto the new layer icon and it will basically double up. And so now we've got two identical layers and that's probably a bit too strong. So if I wanted to just pull back the opacity on one of these, then I can do that to blend it in a bit more. And uh, yeah, there we go. That is the technique in a nutshell. If you want to run the technique manually, then uh, you can just follow the steps in the first half of this video. And if you want to have a shortcut so that you can just do that whole thing in one click, then my luminosity masking panel is available at luminositymaskingpanel.com. So I hope you found this technique and tutorial useful. Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.